Hi, this is Scott Trudeau, Senior Solutions with Adobe. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to create a simple motion path. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about timing. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off by creating a new document. In this case, I'm going to use some of the web presets by clicking up under the Intent drop-down section, Choosing Web. From here, I think I'll just go with uh, 800 by 600 uh, page size and click OK. And as you can see, InDesign has opened up a one-page 800 by 600 spread here. So from this point, I'm going to drag out an object. I'm going to hold down my Shift key to constrain it. Go up to my Options panel and give it just a, a black fill there. So what we'd like to do is see how to uh, create multiple objects and animate multiple objects to a path and kind of adjust their timings. Um, let me go ahead and open up a, a project so you can see what I'm talking about here. So here you can see I'm coming into this diffusion animation. I showed this in the last tutorial as well where you have multiple objects. I'm going to click play animation. These objects are going to uh, travel down individual paths at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how to do something like that. So here I have an object. I'm just going to Alt-Drag. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key. You can see there's a little double arrow there. Alt-Drag out a uh, couple of objects. And I think uh, four objects will give you an, a good enough idea of how to do this. And then I'm going to get my pencil. So I'm going to grab my pencil tool from the uh, tool palette and from my pencil tool I'm just going to tap my D key to return all these options to the default. So in other words no fill, black stroke. And then I'll just uh, drag a path for each one of these objects. So I want this one to kind of curl up over here. I want this one maybe to come up and down here. Draw a path for this. And finally, I will uh, drag a path out and just have this one kind of creep down over here, back up here. So then I need to attach the path to each one of the objects and tell the object to animate to the path. I'm going to do this by coming up my interactive workspace. Yours might be set to essentials at this point or uh, maybe advanced or some other uh, uh, workspace. So I'm going to change mine to the interactive workspace. And then I'm going to come down and get my... Uh, selection tool, my black arrow tool here. I'm just going to drag around uh, the object and the paths. So you just simply drag a box around both so that it touches both so they become selected. And from here you go to animation and you go to your little options uh, drop down here and choose um, convert to motion path. So we've just attached that object to the motion path. That one's done. You're going to do the same thing for each one of the other objects. Click on a little drop down, choose convert to motion path, do the same thing over here, convert to motion path, and the same thing right here. So once this is done, I can go ahead and preview this. So I'm going to click on the little preview panel, and if your preview panel is small, so it might have opened up much smaller like this, you can grab it and drag it out and then click on the little preview button. You can see each one of the objects is animated, but they're animated uh, in a stagger type fashion. So one object will animate, then the next object animates, and they animate based on the way you built um, each one of the animations. So in the order you built the animations, that's how they're animated. So I'm going to come to my timing panel, open up my timing panel, and from here you see the, the objects that we animated. And I can drag these around. So if this animation I wanted to happen before the prior animation, I can move these around and reorder them. So then when I preview, of course, they'd be uh, in that order. But I would like to select all these. So I'm going to click on one of the animations and shift click on the last one to select all the objects inside that range. And down below on the far right corner, if you have a hover over this little object, I can link these all together. When I link those together, that tells InDesign that you want all these animations to occur at the same time. So uh, now I have two ways to preview this. I can either click the preview button, or I can come down here and click the preview button as well. It opens up my preview screen. As you can see, all my objects are animated at the 
same time. So if I want to click on one of these objects and adjust the settings, I can go to the animation panel. So you can see the speed of this object is one second and it's going to play one time. But I wish the speed of the object to be a little bit slower, maybe two seconds and to constantly loop. And so if I click on loop, then it would loop over and over again. If I uncheck that and just click play one time, this is the amount of times you want that to play. So perhaps I want it to happen twice. Then I can choose twice. In this case, I just want it to play one time. And so I'll go to another object, click on the animation tab, tell that to last maybe two seconds. I'm going to do two seconds for each of the other objects as well. And I'll do this one. Okay, so now when I preview this and click on the little play button here, you can see my animation has those new settings. So it's really easy to adjust the timing and uh, the timing and also the length and duration of those animations. Uh, you're just bouncing between the animation panel and the timing panel. Before you know it, you'll have some pretty slick animations. So once it's done, how do you publish it? Well, I have a couple options, but I'm going to show you how to export as a Swift. So I'm going to choose File up the top, come down to where it says Export. From my Export dialog box, I'm going to choose where to save this. In this case, I'll just put a folder on my uh, desktop. I'll just name it Animation. And from the title, I'll just call it uh, Animation. Click on the Save button. Oh, um, before you click save, this is something to bring up. Uh, you want to come down to the bottom here and make sure that it's set to Flash Player Swift. Because we want to create a Swift out of that. Um, also notice you can uh, publish for uh, anim or interactive PDF. Uh, some of the animations may or may not work inside an interactive PDF. Um, I'll, perhaps I'll talk about interactive PDF in a later tutorial. But we're just going to stick with Swift in this case. Click on the save button and you can adjust some of these settings in this case I want it to um, I don't want it to scale I just want it to fit 800 by 600 I want to take on the background of the paper color if you have multiple pages you can click that one checkbox and I'll give you this neat page curl effect uh, which is always a nice effect there so I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK it's going to save those to the folder it's gonna open up my browser where um, now I'm gonna refresh my browser so you can see the animation where you see the animation. So what did it do inside that folder? Well, if I go to my desktop and open up the animation folder, you're going to see that it created the Swift and an HTML file. And then you can take those two objects and publish it to your website. OK, so that's how you can create a um, multiple objects animated to a path and adjust the timings on those objects. So I hope you found that tutorial useful.